I never thought things could get this complicated. alive and well after all. I suppose you're wondering why I haven't written you lately. Well, work has been keeping me hopping. I've been a very busy man. And, and I'm still taking flute lessons with Professor Fox. I have to tell you, I think he likes my progress. I lied. That's not the reason I failed to write. I guess you might say it's been a strange few months. Wickedly strange. Remember when you visited last year, when we went out to eat at Latimeria's? I still laugh when I think of that jerkbait waiter Wolfgang. It seems more like five years now. Anyway, you asked if I was seeing anyone? I said no, but you knew better. I watched as a lie flickered briefly in your eyes and then slid graciously down your spine, just like water off a duck's back. What an oaf I am. Thanks for sparing me. I suppose now I owe you the truth. Not that I really know what the truth is anymore. Her name was Marietta, but she went by Mari. I never did get to meet her. And it's strange because Bernie and I have been such close friends for years, and he usually tells me everything. But he was so secretive about her. He finally did spill his guts to me in a tell-all letter, and it wasn't like he was embarrassed or ashamed about her. He was more like a shield against the scrutiny of others. People can be so judgmental, you know? I think Bernie just needed to know that the relationship could blossom on its own without all the bullshit that society wants to throw at you. Her full name was Marietta Beasley. I met her at Poodle Fresh Supply, this little pet shop down the street from my building. Her alluring grace and school book charm hooked me right away. I knew my life would never be the same. Oh, and I guess I should explain something. You see, Mari was different. She was a fish. But you see, Wendy, I didn't care. We were like crazy school kids. We hit it off so well. We laughed all the way home from the pet store. Well, at least I think so. It was always kind of hard to tell with her. But man, restaurants, movies, coffee houses, parties, going swimming and hiking, you name it, we did it. We even, you know, did that. Don't ask me how, it just sort of happened. Mostly, though, she liked long walks on the beach, just the two of us. I knew that she loved the sea. She'd swim slowly in her aquarium, gazing pensively at the pounding surf, thinking, dreaming. I usually just played in the sand. When you have an interspecies relationship, what you often find is a fundamental, if not incongruent thread of an almost disconsolate misunderstanding. The passive player then becomes ensconced in an interminable give-and-take situation. The consequent juxtaposition of expectations versus ideals unflailingly leads to a path of self-destruction and bitter de-empathy. It's a real lose-lose. I knew from the start it wouldn't last. Could Mari really be happy in my world? One that made her cough and sputter each time she tried to venture into it? Could I trust that she was honest with me? I mean, she never did look me straight in the eye. I wanted to believe it could all work out, that things would get better, but like some sort of Egyptian suckerfish, I was swimming in denial. So there we were, floating along in a sea of discontent, our stale flotsam of foolish pride preventing our emotions from bubbling too close to the surface. Each day I would jet off to work, and each day Mari would wait faithfully in her bowl for my return, always hiding her desire to return to the life she once knew. Until one day... It was a warm evening at the end of a long summer day. I was planning a special night with Mari, a nice dinner, maybe a movie. I even bought her a small castle for her bowl. I walked into the house and I immediately knew something was wrong. I called out to her, but there was no reply. 
Not that she could have, mind you. She was only a fish. But still, it seemed unusually quiet. And it was then that I spotted the empty food box by the pool. A note fluttered nearby. And there was Mari, floating very still. I just stood there in numb silence, my brain unable to comprehend what my eyes were seeing. Then suddenly, the edges of my world began to fade into a watery distortion, like looking through thick aquarium glass. I felt rivulets of salty streams cascading down my cheeks. I was crying. Mari was gone. You know what's incredible? For so long, I tried to hide the fact that I was in love with a cold-blooded aquatic animal. I mean, you know how people are. Their stares, their whispers, their dumb tartar sauce jokes. But now that she's gone, I want everyone to know that Bernie Cricket was, and still is, in love with Mari Beasley. A fish! A damned beautiful fish! I suppose there's a part of me that's happy for Mari. The pain that she felt as she struggled to maintain her identity in a foreign world has finally been put to rest. My pain continues, though I'm getting better and better each day. Most everyone here has been very supportive. Still, I can't eat seafood. Anyway, I should go. Say hi to your folks for me, and please write soon. Your friend, Bernie Cricket. Bernie Cricket.